hired to us having the ability and the good fortune to hire Wes Regan as our uh, social planner responsible for this initiative in the downtown east side. So Wes is going to walk you through uh, PowerPoint and we have a number of speakers who have all been part of this uh, journey over the last several months. If anyone's wondering why I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt, <laughs> it's because it actually belongs to Henrik. <laughs> He couldn't be um, get emotional. He, he was never found without wearing a Hawaiian shirt. And so does his honor. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Zach. Um, at his um, memorial service, um, Wes Regan and Fern Jeffries and, and some other people made sure that there were Hawaiian shirts there for anyone who wanted to wear them. The Henrik Kokuma suit, it was called. Um, Mr. Regan, welcome. Madam Chair, uh, members of Council, West Regan, Social Planner for Community Economic Development. Uh, I want to extend my thanks to Acting Mayor Louie for that acknowledgement. Uh, Henrik was a uh, very important person to be a mentor, and uh, he put in um, a real solid effort into uh, this committee that was formed, I'll speak about, to help create the strategy um, despite his ailing health. And, uh, I, I know that his family and friends likewise appreciate that, that uh, gesture by council here, so thank you for that. Okay, just gather myself. Okay, so. Uh, as um, Mary Claire Zach had mentioned, this is um, phase two of the community economic development strategy. Uh, and in some regards, it represents, I think, an effort for the city uh, to catch up to both itself uh, and to the community in terms of the breadth and depth of the community economic development work that uh, has been ongoing for years in the downtown east side. The area we're talking about here, of course, is the several neighborhoods that comprise the downtown east side, uh, which in 2014, council had approved uh, the downtown east side plan. And when council approved that plan, uh, staff was given further direction to properly coordinate and resource implementation strategies, create a coherent community economic strategy for the downtown east side, recognizing Hastings Street as the local shopping street to reconnect the neighborhoods and their economic hubs, and recognize the need to plan appropriately for the preservation of industrial lands. The staff report recommends approval of four grants totaling $258,879 to support uh, a handful of quick start projects. Uh, some of these are capacity building, uh, some of them are around program development, uh, and some of them are quick start projects that were identified in the co-creation strategy that various implementation partners are ready and raring to put into action. And then um, funds uh, uh, that staff will oversee for a few different RFPs um, and requests for qualifications or requests for expressions of interest around other program ideas and projects that came up during the co-creation process that we just require some feasibility research to be done and some business cases developed and a few um, questions answered. Some of those are pretty ambitious projects, and we'll be reporting back, uh, anticipating um, a report back in May or June of next year with, um, with some of those final projects that will round out this strategy uh, in phase three. So why a downtown east side strategy? Of course, we are familiar with the downtown east side faces a number of challenges in terms of the median income, levels of poverty, uh, about 6,300 people on social assistance in the community, uh, nearly 70% are low income, uh, and um, a high proportion of, of uh, the city's homeless count also. So a lot of the key challenges that we face here, uh, the CED strategy connects to them, and a lot of city staff uh, and community partners are also working in these areas, including mental health and addiction crisis, incomes and poverty crisis, and the strategy actually does connect uh, to the work being done in the recently formed poverty, round, uh, poverty action roundtable. 
vacant storefronts and street disorder, and of course the rapid changes in land economics that have been leading to a lot of anxiety in these communities around things like retail gentrification and affordability. But there are also a lot of key opportunities we have to build on. And I think that sometimes these get overlooked. In the process, we realize that um, we have a lot of great community assets to work with and leverage, including the presence of large institutions like universities, St. Paul's Hospital relocating, the port. These anchor institutions create a great opportunity for social procurement engagement. We also have a, a very mature and accomplished social enterprise uh, sector and an incredibly competent nonprofit uh, sector in the community as well, in addition to the local knowledge that residents themselves have. And of course, uh, because there hasn't been a community economic development strategy since 2004, uh, there has been, I believe, a pent up demand and interest for this type of both an engagement process and this type of a coordinated vision for how we move ahead. And I think as you'll see with the speakers we have lined up, uh, there's a lot of interest in the community to implement and work with the city on this strategy. So just getting into some of the details about it, we alluded to phase two. Well, uh, this um, uh, builds on phase one of the strategy. And in phase one of the strategy, these are a few examples of some major investments that the city has made to work with the community on a range of, of initiatives. There is the 501 Powell Street um, CED platform that the community um, has been animating recently with the move of the um, downtown Eastside Market. PHS Farm, High School Humanity, and other partners are using that space. Uh, the Lux, there is an RFP currently out, and uh, staff will be reviewing some of uh, the submissions for partnership-driven programming in the ground floor retail space of the Lux that addresses um, low barrier employment that is not currently adequately served by a lot of the employment services contracts that are out there. And 312 Main Street is the partnership with Van City Community Foundation uh, to create um, a really um, uh, innovative uh, hub of activity with uh, social enterprise, uh, digital, and, uh, and other social justice related nonprofits. The process to create the strategy has been uh, unfolding uh, for the last several months. In February, we put out an open call for community representation on our CED committee. In March, that committee came together with 35 different organizations ranging from residence associations to the local community centers, nonprofits, the business improvement associations, uh, and uh, a number of social enterprises at the table as well. Between April to October, extensive uh, public engagement, including roundtables and workshops, uh, and a series of these committee meetings and working group meetings were held diving into uh, the content of the strategy, uh, prioritizing certain areas, and uh, coming up with the, uh, the overall direction. And now, of course, uh, November 19th and 23rd, we held two different open houses. Over 100 uh, people attended them in the downtown east side. One of them was at Carnegie Community Center, and the other was in the DC Electric Building, hosted by uh, Hastings Crossing BIA. Here we are today, November 30th, reporting to council, and in early 2017 is when implementation of phase two mm -hmm. will begin. The committee has done a tremendous amount of work, and I know that one of the speakers here is going to, I think, elaborate a bit more on that. But the workshops that were held in addition to the eight, in addition to the eight formal meetings and 11 working group meetings included um, roundtables and workshops on urban Aboriginal economic development, sex workers and transitioning into different careers, survival economy needs of vendors and vendors, and uh, meetings with the business improvement areas on public realm concerns. The strategy is built around nine core ideas. I'm not going to get into all nine of these in my presentation, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about them. I am going to dive a bit deeper into three of them. But they include the livelihoods continuum, social innovation hubs, low income self-employment, an asset-based approach to CED, social purpose real estate collaboration, increasing incomes and reducing poverty, community benefits agreements, stewardship and activation of public spaces, and organizational capacity and coordination, which is largely about um, how we support the community to implement and monitor this plan. The three I want to dive a little bit deeper in, just to give you an example of how, um, when you read through the strategy, uh, it articulates some of these ideas, are the livelihoods continuum, the asset-based approach to CED, and the social purpose real estate collaboration piece. So this is a pretty central idea to the strategy, which um, is, I think, a, a unique contribution uh, to work that has gone on previously. 
Previous economic revitalization strategies have tended to focus on the far right portion of this continuum, largely because senior levels of government uh, were involved in sort of um, dictating what uh, the priorities were, and so formal employment uh, and uh, supported employment received a lot more attention than a lot of the other types of income generating that happens in the community. So uh, in, in my opinion, I think that this CED strategy actually reflects more the reality of what the local economy is like in the downtown east side as opposed to what government partners might wish it would look like. And that includes task-based work, peer-supported work, uh, and volunteering uh, is a major important part of people's lives, uh, and survival work. And so in essence, by acknowledging that the local economy uh, is this type of continuum, what this strategy aims to do is try and create pathways through this continuum, through partnership-driven programming that utilizes things like these social innovation hubs the city has invested in, 501 Powell Street, the Lux, 312 Main, and really help our community partners to fill some gaps that uh, the employment services contracts uh, have unfortunately left open, uh, and ensure that we are meeting people where they are at in their lives in the community in terms of how they make their livelihoods and the types of opportunities they're seeking. Secondly, leveraging large purchases for social procurement. This is building um, on some work done in the United States in Cleveland. Uh, the Cleveland model relies on the presence of anchor institutions as well as community cooperatives. Here in the downtown east side, we don't quite have the same cooperative uh, ecosystem that Cleveland has, but we do have this mature and accomplished, very competent social enterprise ecosystem that we can emulate what Cleveland did with. And so the strategy calls for engaging large purchasers like the university, port, convention center, because uh, these types of institutions have a, a, a permanence to them that allows us to build capacity and continue developing those partnerships. Another example, social purpose real estate collaborations to maintain or retain local serving businesses. The core idea here, of course, social purpose real estate collaboration and the action is uh, a very innovative um, collaboration that has recently come together. BC Housing approached the city uh, and Van City Community Foundation a number of months ago to create a new nonprofit retail property management firm. Uh, firm. It's called Community Impact Real Estate Society, or CIRES, and currently uh, it takes retail units that are owned by BC Housing and combines them into a cross-subsidized portfolio where some of them generate profit to subsidize others that are performing an important community need. So this can help us reach a number of targets in the strategy and in the downtown east side plan, in the social impact assessment, a healthy city strategy, around retaining affordable, low-income serving businesses, affordable grocery stores, perhaps even be expanded to arts and cultural spaces too. Yeah. And thirdly, that was thirdly. So phase two, implementation. Uh, phase two is really, think about it like we've um, found a lot of bricks lying around and we worked with our community partners over the last several months to cement those bricks together to form a really strong foundation on which we can build some even more ambitious programming and projects. And so the grants that we've asked council to um, approve today are really about building capacity to implement some of those projects to coordinate the existing work that's going on in the community more effectively, given the breadth and range of things that are going on, and to engage major industries and sectors on those things like social procurement and social impact employment. Grant recommendation B also includes some quick start grants that came up during the co-creation process, including a grant to the Banners Project to develop a safe, functional, universal card sharing program for bidders and vendors. This one has a support from a number of community partners, and I'm happy to say just um, as of yesterday, Van City Community Foundation came on board to fund the remaining gap that we had there to, uh, to leverage our funds we put in. Low-income self-employment needs assessment that uh, EcoTrust Canada and the local economic development lab will be undertaking. And this is really about the range of things like home-based employment or uh, carving, arts and crafts, uh, the types of things that have often been ignored by economic development strategies. What we find in the downtown east side is that there's a lot of this going on uh, and there's a real interest in learning how we can better support that and connect it to uh, formal employment opportunities. 
And then lastly, um, a grant to support the Sex Workers Exiting Consortium to support sex workers who are looking for um, opportunities to transition out of sex work into other lines of, of uh, income generating. And then recommendation C is uh, a collection of RFPs, RFQs, and RFEOIs to look into the feasibility studies of a few major program and project ideas. For example, uh, relocalizing some of the manufacturing or, or assembly uh, or logistic support for major developments through planned manufacturing and import substitution uh, based on the demand from things like community benefits agreements that we are anticipating for major developments like St. Paul's Hospital, the viaducts coming down. There's a tremendous amount of interest in redevelopment in our employment lands and uh, this strategy seeks to uh, engage major developments um, and really try and find the opportunities to, to create new business ventures on industrial lands, particularly with a lens to create low barrier support employment. And so the grants that we uh, have brought to Council for approval include $150,200 to Van City Community Foundation for capacity building with this um, CENSAC committee, the Community Economic Development Strategic Action Committee to help it uh, evolve into a community uh, implementation vehicle of some kind uh, to be determined, and also to develop some of these social procurement, social hiring strategies. Uh, of course, the Bidders Project and Ecotrust Canada and the Sex Worker Exiting Consortium I just mentioned, the totals for them are $69,800 for the Bidders Project with matching funds from Van City Community Foundation to cover the rest, uh, which is up to $90,000. Ecotrust Canada for $22,379, and uh, they have brought uh, about almost $8,000 of their own cash to that project. And the Sex Work Exiting and Transition Consortium, $16,500 we are requesting from Council, and there are other matching funds that I'm not at liberty yet to really discuss in too much detail, because I don't think it's public yet. Is it? Okay. <laughs> uh, I think what I can say is, um, I think Council uh, should be acknowledged for a $35,000 innovation grant that was provided um, to Banner Women's Support Services actually a few years ago to develop a consortium um, for sex workers to for exiting. Uh, about 2012 or so, Peers was an organization that received funding from the provincial government to assist sex workers in that transition. Um, they had to close their doors, unfortunately, so the consortium the funding that we provided to form this consortium, which has about six different organizations in the downtown east side and elsewhere uh, who belong to it, developed a model and a new model for that. And what they have found out is that the federal government, they had applied for funds um, at least a year ago or more uh, for funding, and they have uh, confirmed that the funding is going to be coming, and the good news is that it's going to be over a six-year period. So there will be an, a formal announcement in the, in the coming months. But that's the, that's the good news. Thank you. And then moving on, the a little more detail about the RFPs and RFQs. Um, they're really to identify some of those major program and project ideas. Uh, just before we want to dive into them, we really wanted to make sure that these were feasible and that they had strong business cases. And so we're going to go out and engage um, some consult consultation support around how these things can, can come together. And in terms of outcomes, the strategy supports goals in the existing policy, including the downtown Eastside plan, which seeks to retain local businesses uh, while seeing additional growth of 3 to 5 percent over the length of the plan, which goes until 2044. Reduce the uh, retail vacancy rate by 24.5 percent. Uh, in, in pure numbers, this is about 70 or so storefronts. Uh, and we're planning to see 3,500 new jobs over the length of the plan. Uh, but it's important to note that we also want to see specifically 1,500 local jobs, uh, which are jobs that people who live in the catchment area are working. Uh, the way that census uh, measures the jobs is that a lot of people who work in the area are actually coming from outside the community. So we want to see local jobs increased as well. And the unemployment rate ideally at parity with the rest of the city. In terms of the Healthy City Strategy, we want to see uh, the median income increase by 3% every year to 2025 and the reduction in poverty rate by 75%. It's important to note that uh, low barrier employment, uh, microenterprise, all these sort of things are, are all worthwhile and are going to help increase uh, people's incomes. 
but one of the greatest single factors in reducing poverty in the downtown east side will be increasing welfare rates, uh, making changes to earnings exemptions, uh, and other major structural changes that, um, that our senior partners in government um, will hopefully be making in the, in the near future. But the fact that we do now have um, a, uh, a strategy that we've worked on with the community, uh, I believe that we do have something tangible to bring to those senior partners uh, to help work on both the advocacy piece uh, and support the poverty reduction tables work, but also some of this employment and entrepreneurship work too. And of course, there are a number of things in the strategy that seek to connect to the um, efforts of the, the city to uh, implement the findings from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, including building the capacity of local Aboriginal organizations, creating new opportunities for leadership development and career finding for Aboriginal youth. Uh, that's part of um, one of the program development grants that we've asked for, uh, RFEOI. Uh, to also increase awareness of and inclusion of indigenous protocols and customs in general was something that came up during the process a number of times. Uh, and to seek ways to incorporate indigenous economic ideas and values in local economy goals. We held a forum uh, earlier in the year with Simon Fraser University's CED program in which we had uh, a number of speakers from local uh, First Nations uh, and a speaker from Africa who came to talk about um, uh, work around decolonization and indigenous economic development in Africa. Uh, and we intend to follow up with SFU and community partners to hold another event in the new year, further exploring the opportunities around Aboriginal economic development. We have more work to do on this, although um, I'm happy to say that it is included in the strategy. In terms of timeline, a lot of the implementation is front-loaded uh, from January into May with a lot of the um, capacity building, issues of governance to be explored, how we implement, monitor, and measure uh, these projects and strategy pieces. And then in May and June, uh, we are anticipating staff reporting back once those um, feasibility studies and some of the um, business planning work has happened for the larger projects that we mentioned around local manufacturing uh, and some of the anchor institution engagement piece. And so by the end of 2017, we will have, I think, what constitutes the, the first full comprehensive community economic development strategy that we've had since 2004, the last time that any such effort like this happened. And I think that that's something um, that I, for one, would be excited to take to senior levels of government as they consider ways to work with cities on alleviating poverty and uh, improving the lives of Vancouverites and other Canadians. So with that, I thank you, and I look forward to any questions. Fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Regan. Um, I'm going to...